Hello. Well, um, we've been thinking about what to talk about, and, um, well, recently I rewatched uh, one of my favorite comedies, and it also occurred to me I really haven't talked about comedies much on, here, on this channel. So I thought, why not just talk about a uh, comedy I love that is loved by many? Um, and that movie is, of course, Young Frankenstein. Um, now, uh, this is a movie I've watched ever since I was young. I've loved it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's just one of the best comedies ever made. You know, just a comedic retelling of Frankenstein. If you've seen Frankenstein, you sort of know the gist of it. I mean, there, obviously there are uh, yeah, differences, because uh, Gene Wilder's character, uh, you know, he, he pronounces his name um, Frankenstein. So perhaps this should be called Young Frankenstein. Because you know he 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 doesn't want to be connected to Victor Frankenstein, so you know he just wants to you know <laughs> he just wants to ha do his own contribution to science with very little to do with uh, his you know like. Grandfather, yeah, his grandfather, um, yeah, great grandfather. So, because his, he gets a, there's a will to his grandfather, he's, you know, he's died, and so he goes to Transylvania to, uh, uh, to you know, as the as the back says, he's summoned to Transylvania because of the will. And he's uh, and he basically discovers uh, how to bring someone back to life. Uh, and his he doesn't really want to initially follow the footsteps of what is sort of at that point sort of like established for Frankenstein's. And he just wants to do his own thing, but he gets sucked into that. End. Because it's made by Mel Brooks and written by Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder, um, things things uh, just well they just go anywhere but normal basically. Let's just say it's just hilarious. Um, the acting is spot on. Gene Wilder's incredible performance. To Peter Boyle who plays the monster. Um, Terry Garr, who's his assistant. Marty Feldman's Igor. Uh, Cloris Leachman is Frau von Blucher. Blucher. Blah. Like normal, I can't really speak properly. But, you know. Which that means uh, glue for those who don't know. And that's also why the horses neigh every. all of. Uh, time her name is said. So, there you go. It, didn't know. Um, Madeline Kahn as uh, Gene Wilder's fiance. <laughs> this whole movie is just incredible. Uh, I mean, what can you really say? It's a movie that people love. It's an hilarious film. It's a great homage and parody of Frankenstein. Uh, Kenneth Mars is also in this. And Gene Hackman has a cameo, uh, basically as the blind man, who uh, sets the monster's finger on f or thumb on fire when he's giving him cigars, and because uh, he's blind, he's just uh, like dumping food, hot f like food and soup on his lap, breaking the, uh, you know, the glass he's given when they're having wine to, to toast. And, you know, and getting his thumbs out on fire is what, you know, that's what uh, makes him just get out of there. And, uh, 
Yeah, this is just one of those films that it's like you just I just love watching every just every so often. I believe I've said before that uh, you know, Doctor Strangelove is my favorite comedy of all time. I'm not sure where I would put this, but this would be up in some of my top something. I don't know, top five or top ten. But it would be definitely one of my favorite comedies, because it's just... It's so hilarious, and this is a film that probably could never be made today. Like, basically all of Mel Brooks's films. I remember someone said, maybe this could be, like, between Blazing Saddles, the producers, uh, uh, History of the World, Part 1, uh, Spaceballs, you know, maybe a silent movie, even, because there's so many sexual jokes, so many inappropriate stuff in Mel Brooks's films, that you'd have to really center a movie like this. And if you did that, it's not funny. Blazing Saddles, would, in particular, would be would suffer a lot, as would History of the World Part 1. Hilarious movies, but because of the content, because of the material, it, it just would never be made today. Um, it's very rare to see writer, director, uh, and even comedians do jokes that are so hilarious, it can sort of, it's both, it can, some jokes can be very offensive, yet uh, hilarious. And I'm not saying, you know, there's anything offensive in this film. There's just a, really a lot of inappropriate humor. Um, and even as a kid, you know, I kind of had an idea, exact, uh, like, like, this is inappropriate, might not have totally understood what about the joke was inappropriate, but I just knew it was. And I, as I got older, you know, you, you just you get the jokes that you, as a kid you wouldn't have gotten, and just makes it even funnier. And yeah, I remember uh, seeing how this film and uh, Blazing Saddles came out the same year, and I'm just like, wow. Two incredible Mel Brooks films back to back, basically. Um, and Mel Brooks does not appear in this movie uh, physically. Uh, he makes the wolf sound at the very in the beginning of the movie uh, when he's playing darts with Kenneth Mars or Gene Wilder. There's a cat that gets hit by one of Gene Wilder's darts, and that's that's Mel Brooks. And then when he sees the lab. You uh, you hear Victor Frankenstein, and that's Mel Brooks. Uh, he has a cameo, but, you know, it's not like the other stuff of Mel Brooks in all of his movies where you see him. You know, he's actually playing a character. He's not just voicing it. Um, the producer is he voices a character, too. Um, but he's very rarely ever... He's just the voice, and you never see him. And this is one of those examples. And apparently it's because Gene Wilder wanted him to not make a cameo appearance in this movie at all. Like, he didn't want him to show up. But he did show up in a way. You know, because, I mean, it's Mel Brooks. He can't not be in his movies. You know, he has to show up somehow, somewhere. Um, I want to get the Blu-ray of this one day. Um, I love this DVD, though. It's a great DVD. It's hilarious. It's a great film. Here. Yeah. Marty Feldman is just... Uh, he's just... He was just one of the best comedic actors. He's, he's just... Such a unique look, and he was so hilarious. It's, a, it's sad that so many of these incredible actors and actresses are gone. Madeline Kahn, Peter Boyle... Marty Feld, uh, Gene Wilder, uh, Terry Garr, Boris Leachman, and Mo Brooks are they're still here, and uh, yeah, Kenneth Mars also passed away years ago. Uh, Gene Hackman's still here, but he's retired, so he, uh, he's just writing books now. 
I don't know. I just love this movie. I don't know. It's like, you, what can you say about something like this? It's everything that can be said has been. Um, apologies for not really uh, being more insightful, but it's like, it's just one of those movies. It's hilarious. You see it, if you, you enjoy it. It's like the sentiments you have are pretty much what everyone else has who loves this movie. I, I just don't know. I don't. I can't. Re words don't really do justice. I guess if it, anything, if there is anything with this, you just need to see it. Watch. Just watch Mel Brooks's films. Um, I love Blazing Saddles. Obviously, I love Spaceballs because of you know Star Wars and it being a parody of that. Um, but yeah, I just love I love silent movie. Love History of the World Part 1. Blazing Saddles, as I've said. Producers. Dracula Dead and Loving It. I mean, there's there's so many movies he's been a part of, if not directing, writing. Um, remember, he produced uh, Elephant Man. And he did not uh, let his name be credited as like a producer because... Uh, uh, everybody, I guess, would have thought this was a comedy, and it wasn't. Um, but Mel Brooks has never done any other dramas, as far as I'm concerned. Or at least as far as I know. Not concerned, but... Uh, that doesn't make sense. But yeah, he, he surely hasn't. Um, again, not, not that I've seen, at least. Not, he hasn't, but that's as far as dramatic stuff as he's ever done. I want to do more comedy stuff. I want to talk about more comedies. Um, some of the films I've talked about do have humorous moments, but they would never constitute as a comedy. Well, maybe Once Upon a Time in Hollywood would. That's a comedy drama. So there you go. I, there, there you go. There's a first big thing of a comedy, I guess, I've talked about. And here's, I guess, this is the second. But this is the one that, that you might, you know... I don't really talk much about comedy comedic stuff, and I want to do that more. Maybe I'll talk about Monty Python, since that's 50 years old this year, and I love Monty Python. Uh, so, yeah. Hope to talk about more uh, Mel Brooks stuff, too. So, maybe uh, another movie of his in the future. Maybe Blazing Saddles. I don't know. Well, that's all I have to say. So, uh, I hope you all have a great day, have a great week, great weekend, and till next time, goodbye.